Hello there, my name is Blooded Cat, and I have been doing a lot of streaming about Blood Bowl lately, and I know there are some people out there that are unfamiliar with this game, or are perhaps a little concerned about trying it out because it looks so complicated and there's a lot being thrown in your face at once. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys what's up with this game, what it is, what it tries to do, and who would really get a kick out of playing it, what type of person uh, might enjoy this the most. Blood Bowl is, at its heart, it's a turn-based strategy game. Regardless of anything else you've ever seen, heard, or read about it, all you need to know is this. It's turn-based strategy. That's it. I get a turn, I move my guys, I do a thing, the opponent gets a turn, they move their guys, they do things, and somewhere down the line an, an objective gets accomplished. Now, Blood Bowl also uses high-risk mechanics. I'm not going to say risk versus reward, because there's it's far more weighted towards risk than reward. Almost any action you do, other than going within, moving within your normal allotment, requires a die of some type to be rolled. And on most occasions, if you fail that die roll, causing your opponent to have fumbled something or to have been knocked over themselves as opposed to knocking over an opponent, your turn immediately ends and it switches to your opponent's turn. So, there's a lot of ways that things can go wrong very easily. But when a plan comes together and Hannibal comes through, lights up the cigar, everything goes crazy and you feel amazing. So there is an order of operations to it. Generally, after you've gotten a few games under your belt, you start to realize that you should probably be conducting your turn from no risk to low risk to high risk moves in that order. Now, all of these mechanics are wrapped inside a football-like coding. Blood Bowl does take place in an alternate universe as far as the Warhammer Fantasy line is concerned. Um, this is a digitalization of a board game from the 80s. And so all of its rules that were copied over are treated like board game rules, which is why people ha tend to have a bit of an issue trying to get into this game. They expect it to be like a PC game with the appropriate tutorials, simpler mechanics, and they're unprepared for the sheer depth of things that it's good to know when you go into a Blood Bowl match. And this isn't just for football enthusiasts, far from it. I don't enjoy American football whatsoever. However, I cannot put this game down for more than, you know, a few days at a time. This game takes fantasy football and makes things literal. You are playing the role of the coach, and you, are, and you have... Uh, up to 16 different players on your team that whose actions you dictate and pray to God they succeed. And you have all sorts of interesting little races from the Warhammer Fantasy lineup. You've got your typical Chaos, you have Dwarves, we've also got some Halflings just for the giggles. You'll also see little some interesting guys like the Camry, perhaps even Lizardmen, and, of course, what would a Warhammer game be without orcs, in the fantasy lineup at least, Skaven. So, you get to pick from, there's about, there's a little over 20 races in the Chaos Edition version of the game. And if you're ever thinking of buying it, it comes out on Steam sale very frequently. It's also down to a pretty affordable price, usually $20 or less. 
and um, you'll pick one of these teams. You could always make new teams, and you can always you could have as many active ones as you want at a time. That's fine. And you buy the players, and you roll with it. Um, one major thing that this game also does that perhaps most board games don't is it has persistence. From the ground up, this was designed for persistent leagues where you play out a season of games and its multiplayer component as well as its single player component to a point has that um, first and foremost in mind. Yes, you can play a couple of one-off games and that's fun. However, once your guys start earning star player points, which is what they call experience points in this game, because you do moves that only a star player could, you start to level up and you start to learn skills. Not you as the coach, but your individual players. And they will start to do things that they couldn't do before, or they start getting a whole hell of a lot better at their normal routines. And that is where the different teams fan out into all sorts of different builds and depending on each coach's tastes one team will be absolutely nothing like another of the same race despite them being around the same point level so this has the persistence of an MMO without the subscription fee and without the pressure to play it and get your money's worth out of it who would enjoy the game of Blood Bowl? Well, anyone who's a huge turn-based strategy fan. I'm looking at you guys that love XCOM or love stuff like Advance Wars or even Fire Emblem. Because this is that sort of thing where you have persistent characters, you level them up, they get better. Yeah, they screw up sometimes and you yell at them, and sometimes they pay horribly for their mistakes. Speaking of persistence, death... Permanent injury, stat reduction, that is all a part of this game. Uh, it was only recently that I had one of my, um, one of my kind of most valued players, um, killed. In game. He's never coming back, there's nothing that can be done about that. Yeah. I was a little angry, but it happens. Although I've been playing Blood Bowl long enough that I haven't had to really rage about anything. Um, Warhammer enthusiasts love this. Familiar races take them in a funny and humorous direction. Humor is a big part of this game. It's very lighthearted and not, and it's meant to be kind of silly and goofy. Uh, anyone who's a fan of football and maybe has like a passing hobby or passing enjoyment of fantasy settings, novels, not necessarily Warhammer, this could be a nice combination of the two for you. Um, one downside that I will say about Blood Bowl is that the high risk system it has, if your dice are rolling poorly and continue to roll poorly, there are a lot of times when you will feel like you're getting shit on and there's no way to climb out of this hole that you've been thrown into. And you won't necessarily think that you're directly at fault for it, which for some of the case for some of the time is is true, absolutely. And so it's very easy for people to get pissed off in that aspect of the occasional helplessness, there's no way I can turn this around. Dice of the past don't influence dice of the future. The random number generator can go can swing both ways, as, and there's no guarantee that your next turn won't be amazing. Um, so once you can get past some of that, you are you are golden for any sort of the very serious long-term persistent leagues. I think that's pretty much Blood Bowl in a nutshell. I'm going to release a follow-up video to this that will show some of the basic rule mechanics in play. I'm not going to get into any kind of strategy. There's a lot of things out on the internet that are far more well-written than anything that I can put to paper or to mouth and are 
going to be much more worth your time, and I'll make sure to make mention of those resources when the time comes. Thanks for watching, and hope to speak to your curiosity.